We go from a spotless sun to a bunch of sunspots emerging on the Earth-facing disk, and a snake-like filament begins to rotate into Earth view. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week stays a bit on the calm side, but that doesn't mean the sun isn't giving us some fun stuff to look at. As we take a look at our front side disk, you can see we actually didn't have all that much going on early in the week. We did have region 2853, but at first it wasn't even a sunspot. It was just a plage region. It got promoted to a sunspot, and then around the 12th, oh my goodness, suddenly all these sunspots started coming up. We had region 2854, 2855, 56, and now 57. And it's like, oh my goodness, where did all these regions come from? Now, it's not like they're growing all that fast, and that's not the issue. The issue is just that there's so many of them, and they all seem to be from the new solar cycle. So this is really good news. So we are going to be watching to see whether or not they really start boosting that solar flux, and of course, whether or not they start growing fast enough to become big flare players. But for right now, they're kind of calm and quiescent, but it's sure giving us something to kind of keep our eyes peeled out for. Now, on top of that, we also have, if you look off into the east and the north, we do have kind of like a filament, the snake-like filament, and I will talk a bit more about that as we take a look at the sun's far side here up in a few minutes. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see by the X-ray flux that it's still sitting kind of low. We're sitting just below the B-class floor, and therefore, by proxy, the solar flux also continues to be low. You do see that we've popped a few C-class flares, some low C-class flares. These have all been from region 2853, and that's that big, bright region on the Earth-facing disk. But you know what? It's not really growing all that much, so we're not expecting any big flares from that region. We also haven't seen any solar storms being launched and therefore we're just kind of expecting the same kind of thing and even as the new regions have been growing over the past couple days we're not seeing a big rise in the x-ray flux we're not going to see a big rise in the solar flux we're still sitting in the low 70s low to mid 70s for for solar flux which means marginal radio propagation on earth's day side and likely these kind of conditions will continue Switching to our solar storm conditions, we've actually been pretty quiet over the past couple weeks. In fact, the last time we actually hit storm levels was clear back on August 2nd, and that was from that complicated configuration of, of solar storms that hit Earth. Sadly, though, they didn't last all that long, and that was because the configuration of the solar storms weren't all that good. We got a little bit of aurora, but we're not all that much too, too bad, especially since since then we've only seen a couple Small pockets of fast solar wind, like on the 7th, that bumped us up and we got a little bit of a roar at high latitudes, and then it kind of quieted back down, and we've been kind of just bumping from unsettled conditions to, to uh, quiet conditions, really, over the past couple weeks. And sadly, these conditions are going to continue because we don't have any solar storms in the forecast that are going to hit Earth. And although we haven't had many solar storms as of late, and the solar storms that we've been having haven't really lasted all that long or been all that intense, nonetheless, we still have gotten a few aurora views from different places in the world. And a good thing, too, because we've had that gorgeous Perseid meteor shower that's been ongoing this month. And so let me wanted to share you some of the shots that have been sent to me uh, that show both the aurora and the Perseids, like this gorgeous shot from Scotland. An aurora has been seen also in Iceland. And as we go over the pond, aurora has been seen in many places in Canada, especially Manitoba, like these beautiful shots. And they had some Perseid earth grazing uh, views as well. An aurora was also seen in Saskatchewan. And it even dipped down into the United States. We saw it here in Minnesota and also the aurora australis was seen in Antarctica. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun, well, just a little bit from the side. 
And when we take a look at Stereo's view, you can see that big bright region that's rotating to the west limb in Stereo's view, that's region 2853. And you can see just behind it, a few bright regions emerging. Those are regions 2855 and 2857. And you can watch those things continue to grow in Stereo's view, but you haven't seen them launch any solar storms. But what's really interesting is taking a look at the east limb in Stereo's view. Do you see that dark kind of finger-like thing coming up, that's that bright filament I was telling you about. And it's really kind of in a complicated space because just to the right of it, looks like there might be a dark finger-like coronal hole and that makes it unstable. And then just to the, to the east of it, the left of it, it looks like there might actually be a bright region, maybe a remnant bright region. So that region, it, the whole thing kind of looks like it's a bit unstable, which means we might get this thing launching as a solar storm here in the near future. Who knows if it's gonna be earth directed or not, but we're definitely keeping our eyes on it. Meanwhile, we also have what looks to be a remnant bright region in the southern hemisphere as well. So all of these new bright regions, along with the new regions that have been emerging in Earth view, they could be boosting that solar flux for us and boosting that, mar that marginal radio propagation even higher up to hopefully pretty soon get us close to that good range. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 22nd. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe the Perseid meteor shower, you know, there's some really good earth grazing Perseids right now, and they're going to be visible just after dusk. So if you want to catch those, you're definitely going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we aren't really anticipating all that much when it comes to space weather this week. We don't have any real fast solar wind on the way, nor do we have any solar storms that are Earth directed. So at high latitudes, NOAA's only expecting unsettled conditions, but up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm due to kind of some unsettled conditions and a little bit of fast solar wind that might reach us from that northern coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through, I can't say the Earth strike zone, but you know, rotating closer to the west limb. So that's going to be expected at high latitudes. At mid latitudes, though, we're really only expecting quiet to maybe unsettled conditions with only about a 10% chance of active conditions. And this will last easily at, throughout this entire week, unless, of course, we get a solar storm that's launched towards Earth. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares, even though we do have numerous bright regions, including four sunspot regions on the Earth-facing disk, none of these are flare players right now. In fact, even over the whole disk, we hardly have about 15% chance of C-class flares. So this should make GPS users very happy. We have no risk for radio blackouts, and it's going to continue like that easily over this week. Now, we do have um, the solar flux in the low 70s right now. It doesn't look like it's going to grow all that much, but we are hopeful with all these new bright regions emerging that something will give us a little bit more and boost that solar flux. We also have those other regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here on about three or four days. So these um, the solar flux should continue at this level, and this means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders just kind of hang in there. I'm sure the solar flux will pick up again soon, and just know at least we're not going back into that poor region. So the space weather this week remains a bit on the quiet side. You know, even though we do have quite a few bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, including four sunspots that have been emerging over the past few days, you know, they're really not all that flare active and they haven't boosted the solar flux all that much because they're just not growing that quickly. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we're sitting in the low 70s to mid 70s for solar flux. And this means marginal radio propagation on on Earth's day side, and likely that is going to continue throughout this next week. So you're just going to have to hang in there. Hey, at least we're not seeing any radio blackouts, so that at least is good news. Now, also, we aren't seeing any solar storms that are Earth directed, and we don't really have much in the way of fast solar wind. We do have that northern uh, polar coronal hole, but it's really not going to give us all that much, and definitely nothing uh, in mid latitude. So, aurora photographers, you're just going to have to kind of, you know, relax for 
for a few days, but we are watching that filament that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days, and that could possibly launch as a solar storm. So we're going to be keeping an eye on it, because if that's the case, who knows, we might get some aurora in about a week or so. Now, also, you GPS users, well, you know, there's not a lot of disturbance when it comes to uh, radio blackouts, and there's not a lot of disturbance when it comes to fast solar wind or solar storms. So, you know, that's really good news for GPS reception, and it should look good for you pretty much all over the globe. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.